As Honorary President of ALB UK Television, it was my great pleasure and privilege to interview Etilda Jone, the Minister of Justice of Albania, a few days ago in Tirana. Today she is in London and tomorrow she gives a keynote speech at Chatham House. Here is the interview. And so we came here to meet people like yourself, highly professional women, uh, to sort of show this is not the case at all. So uh, starting the interview, and welcome and thank you for doing an interview with me, um, I think it's very important uh, to highlight as well that you've had a meteoric rise to fame, really, uh, as a politician at the same time. Uh, and that it is not true that of what we was being put out in London that Albanian women are put down. What, what would you just like to sort of say very quickly about Albanian women and, and how you feel it is important for more women to go into politics? Uh, actually, I'm a minister for uh, around one year and a half. Uh, before, I've been deputy minister of justice. And I can mention that uh, it's not an issue of women uh, in, in Albania, because if we see the uh, presence of the women in the government, we have more than 50% that are women ministers. So, uh, of course, that uh, to be a, a woman, it's not an easy thing and to, to do the politician. But uh, it's that, uh, of course, that women in Albania are trying to uh, have their positions based on their professional skills, based on the meritocracy. You know that uh, politics is not uh, so easy, not only for women, but even for men. Yes. And uh, even in my case, I've been part of the civil society. Uh, I've been civil right defenders and uh, I think that uh, it has been quite difficult even for me in the beginning. But now uh, I see that uh, if you believe in something and if you are trying to do uh, something good for the country, for the people, then you can uh, perform that and you can uh, uh, be successful in the end. And I know that uh, when you first sort of really uh, came into the focus of your current position, it was all about corruption. And I think you were one of three people to sort of look at potential corruption in Albania. What were the type of difficulties that you were facing when you first came to this role? Uh, Ministry of Justice uh, has this as an added responsibility because uh, in previous has been uh, another state minister that has had uh, as uh, the main task. But now uh, we have tried to, to change the attitude uh, toward the fight against corruption. Uh, we are trying to design a lot of uh, different uh, policy on the prevention of the uh, corruption. But meantime, uh, in the other hand, we are uh, trying to put in force a lot of measures that are repressive measures. And it does it mean that uh, we have designed a plan of action and a strategy on the prevention of anti-corruption that is a national one, because the Minister of Justice is national co coordinator of anti-corruption. And uh, in this plan of action, there are a lot of different ministries, institutions, local authorities and central uh, uh, authorities, but even independent institutions that are part of this plan of action, that they have different responsibilities on uh, taking measures on preventing uh, the corruption. And uh, there are a lot of on public procurement, there are a lot of measures on public procurement and uh, we have done a lot of uh, uh, amendments on the legislation that has been into force on public procurement in order to address all the recommendations that international mechanisms but even European Commission has given to 
Albania in order even to fulfill mm. uh, the priority that we have uh, for uh, European uh, accession yes. of Albania in, in EU. So uh, it is something like we are working hard on that. Of course, that we have had the support of our, of our international partners. But meantime, we are trying to uh, regulate and to fix first the legislation, the internal procedures, uh, mostly on the cases or on the issues that in the past we have suffered or the perception of the citizens has been higher about the corruption. Meantime, about the repressive measures, me as Minister of Justice, uh, I am uh, leading a task force of anti-corruption and uh, it is inter-institutional uh, task force. We are working on uh, uh, trying to, to do a lot of inspections in different uh, local and central uh, institutions, mostly when the perception of the public is higher about corruption and in those agencies where the citizens are uh, trying to have the services, different services. And the perception of the public uh, about corruption is mostly uh, linked with these agencies, with the property agencies in uh, healthcare, uh, hospitals and uh, education, so, uh, or tax administration. So just only because this task force of anti-corruption is established on May 2018 and until now we have had really good results. We have done the administrative investigation in this institution based even on different complaints or allegations by the citizens on abuse of power or corruption. And until now we have undertaken around 400 and 50 measures, disciplinary measures, for employees in public administration. And they, uh, mostly of them, they have been dismissed by the uh, institution. And around 36 cases uh, have been sent to the prosecution offices for uh, a criminal charge. And this is part of your justice reform vetting system, is it? Is it this is all part of the system, this vetting system of, of, of uh, ensuring that uh, uh, when you're taking on new staff, they, they go through this vetting system as well, I understand. Vetting system is part of the big, of, uh, the big reform that we have undertaken before uh, five years ago in 2014, that is the justice reform. And the justice reform, it's a unique and radical reform that we have undertaken. Uh, it is linked with the justice system. Mm -hmm. And the vetting uh, process, it's uh, one mechanism that we have found uh, together with uh, the opinion and the expertise of our international partners that it's uh, important to be done for the judges and the prosecutors. And the vetting process, it does it mean that uh, the judges and the prosecutors have to be scanned for three elements. First, the uh, property or for their uh, incomes. Uh, second, it's for their integrity. And third, for the, their professionalism. So it does it mean that we have in the system 800 judges and prosecutors mm. and they will go all in this scan that it's performing by some independent constitutional institutions that they are ad hoc with the mandate institutions, five years mandate and uh, the appeal college is for a, a ninth year mandate. So uh, until now uh, we have designed that has to be first scanned uh, the judges of the higher courts and uh, of general prosecution office. Uh, and until now, there are more than 50% of the judges and prosecutors that have been dismissed by the system because they have not uh, passed successfully the vetting process. And I know one issue that is being brought up currently is about unaccompanied minors as well. And, and I gather that's a, a problem coming into Britain at the same time. 
What, what type of things, what type of new reforms are you looking at right now? You know, everything is linked with the justice reform. Even fighting corruption is linked with the justice reform because we have designed uh, totally a new system in the, in the justice system. Uh, we have designed uh, new uh, governance, uh, governing institutions for prosecution and for the courts. And uh, we have designed uh, the High Inspectorate of Justice that will uh, do all the uh, administrative inspections on the, uh, on the uh, liability responsibility of the judges and prosecutors. So everything is linked with the justice reform. Despite that we are in the beginning of uh, implementation of this uh, reform, all the other reforms that we are trying to undertake, even for uh, juvenile justice system or even for uh, the organized crime, fighting organized crime, or for uh, unaccompanied uh, children that uh, they pass the borders or in different ways, we are trying to take measures in order that this can be minimized in the future. And um, if you allow me, uh, since Albania, uh, it, is, it has had some issues on organized crime. Even based on the justice reform, it will be established uh, a special prosecution office, special courts and a national bureau of investigation that will deal just only with the case of, cases of organized crime and anti-corruption. So, all this new system, all this new uh, architecture of the justice in the middle, it will uh, have uh, effect and it will affect all the other fields. I mean, recently you're probably aware that in London it's been reported of Albanian gangs, uh, even uh, some of these young men posing uh, for the fronts of newspapers and it's caused uh, a, a tremendous stir, and I think a, a tremendous slur on your country and your people as well. How do you feel about that, and, and do you work regularly with the Home Office in London as well? I think that all countries, if we read newspapers, has different gangs, and this does not, mean, does not mean that they are just only Albanian citizens. So. Mm. so we find this news in Italian newspapers, in uh, Netherlands, in Germany, and this does not mean that are linked always with Albanian citizens. So uh, organized crime, it's such as a transnational crime. It's not linked just only with one country. And we have good uh, collaboration with different central authorities that are ministries of justice in different countries. In uh, England, it is a different thing because we have the collaboration with home affairs, mm -hmm. on different uh, criminal proceedings or different procedure of extradition or even transference of the citizens, Albanian citizens uh, that are suffering their sentence in, in uh, England uh, prisons. So we have really good collaboration. During this period we have tried to strong that in order to uh, to have this kind of uh, collaboration and we can find out even how we can help each other on investigation. For example, with Italy we have a uh, very uh, uh, strong collaboration mostly on the transnational crime since we are neighbors and sometimes the organized crime is moving from one country to another and uh, of course that it's a challenge, not, uh, not only Albanian challenge or England challenge, but it's for all, uh, for, for all our countries. And um, meantime, Albania, it's part of uh, Eurojust, and we have signed uh, the last year the agreement with Eurojust, and uh, this will help and will give some other means and mechanisms even to the prosecution office to work together with the other uh, prosecution office in different countries for having some joint investigations uh, for difficult cases. And just one final personal question, if I may again, is 
Uh, we have a lot of female viewers, obviously, with our channel as well. And I know you're a mother, as well as being a cabinet minister. How do you balance careers? How do you feel about um, <clears throat> professional women these days being able to balance a career as a mother and a family, as, as well as someone of, of as importance as yourself? It is a very difficult question, because even my son asks me different times that what is more important, to be a minister or to be a mother? So uh, really I try to balance that and it's not an um, easy thing to be done even by me or even by my colleague. They, they are in uh, very important positions and they are all day uh, trying to deal with different cases and with different responsibilities. But of course that the support is given by the family by my husband, by my son, by my parents, in order that I can perform uh, in due time the, my responsibility. But I think that it's uh, when I've had the opportunity to talk with my colleagues abroad, that they are ministers of justice and they are women, uh, we have the common challenge uh, because sometimes it's difficult to balance that. But it's needed the support of colleagues, support of family, and to be focused on the objectives that you have uh, given to uh, yourself. Ministers, thank you so much for your time today. Thank you for the interview. It thank was you. a pleasure. Thank you.